Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Third time. Third time. Third time is a charm. Another episode of Trash Talk. I'm Damian Hill. With me, as always, is TJ O'Connor. Tonight on Trash Talk, what we're talking about is the consequences and the benefits of cross-training with other training partners and other gyms. And before I get into what I mean specifically by that, got to go over the sponsors of the show, Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo out in New Brighton, Minnesota, Origin Wellness CBD, the Striking Institute, Spartan Martial Arts, James Clark Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Fighters, and TJ's Mom. How are you doing tonight, TJ? I'm doing good, man. I got some good sleep last night. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, and that's actually pretty good to hear that you got some good sleep because <laughs> it's going to be rare occasions of that. Rare. rare. <laughs> so I, I guess to start it off with the question, I'll ask you first, and I guess the some of the negative sides of cross-training and by by negative sides, because some people might not understand, I mean how coaches might interpret it, how other teammates might interpret it, the fact that you might be training at, you might cross train with another gym or another team and have a good relationship, but then another guy on one of your other teams only trains at one place and they might be fighting a guy who's, who cross trains with you. And I guess all of those types of things, like what do you, what do you see some of the negative aspects of it? Man, um, I, I think obviously the first one that most people think of and the one that worries most people, I think, is, well, what if I train with the guy and, and I show, show him what I got and then we have to end up fighting down the road? Something like that. You know, you, you might be training with a future competitor. A lot of times you see guys train after competing with each other. But with, with it being, you know, MMA is such a big, big thing on the, lo- on the national scale, but, you know, locally, shit, we have to fight against each other. You know, that, that, that's kind of how things work. So guys kind of get that. And then you mentioned the coaches as well. And, and it's far from always the case, but, but, you know, there is sometimes where coaches, you know, they get, I feel protective is a good word. You know, it's just, you know, it's their fighter. You know, I, I showed them how to do this jab. What if he goes over there and they're like, well, no, that jab's stupid. You need to do this. And it's like, well, no, he's going to discredit my, my teaching. And, and I don't think that's ever the case. But, I mean, when you talk about some of the negative consequences, I think those are the, the things that come to people's minds. Yeah, I mean, and then we all heard stories about, um, well, I guess it's not really poaching if you already train at a gym, but I guess what I mean specifically when I say poaching a fighter is when a guy's already committed to cross-training, they understand the benefits that both gyms are giving, but then there's one of the coaches that might have a have a little bit of a better connection, whatever the connection is, and I don't, you know, whatever it is, says, hey, if you don't train here full-time, then... I'm not going to give you these opportunities or let you take advantage of my connections and things like that, which is kind of fucked up, but (laughs) but it's not something that's outrageous to believe happens. And it's not like that. I, not that I blame the coaches for that either too necessarily. It, I don't like it, but at the same time, like if, if these coaches have spent all this time developing these relationships and they give an opportunity to a guy who's basically using them to get the opportunity who's just going to abandon them after they get it that's bullshit that's where i can see the coaches yeah. part you know why and that's partly why they get so protective too no like i spent all this time developing you and then you're going to go tra- change gyms and then now everybody's going to get all the credit for or i mean now those coaches or that team is going to get all the credit for the skills that I help you build. I still want to see you go out and succeed. I still want you to go out and do really good. But I also am trying to make a career of coaching. And if you're not giving me my credit for what I did, then I don't want to help you out that much. You know, and it's it's so fucked up to say. And I've said it, but I understand that feeling. Oh, it's a real thing. And I've said it on the show multiple times. <clears throat> Fighters in general are very sensitive people when, when it comes to you know all sorts of facets it, it takes a lot it's emotional sport and let's be real a lot of coaches former fighters it, it transfers over i mean you you get protective you want to see sign and i think ultimately it's going to come down to the fighter and the fighter has to state their intentions i mean if, if you're at a gym and you say coach you know I, I this is my gym i love this place but hey 
they got good guys in my weight over there. I want to go over there a couple times a week and see what I can, you know, and, and test myself, broaden my horizons. I feel like as the head coach, you, you, you know, you want to honor that. And then I do get, like you said, from the coach at the other gym, you know, you're coming in here and, you know, you're working with my guys at some point, you know, are, are you on our team or are, are you not? Because there, there's certain things I want to show certain guys. And I mean, it's a really delicate thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to come down. There's certain fighters. The fighter might ultimately go, I want to go to this gym. And there's going to be guys that are like, no, this is my home gym. At the end of the day, if you don't want me to come here, I respect that. And, you know, if a guy's going to leave a gym, I don't think it comes down in, I got to think of how we're that. It, it, it does come down to the coaching, obviously, but it's the fighter's decision. I don't think it's the coaches per se saying, oh, well, you know, if you want to come here, you can't be there. But, you know, if they do say that and the fighter makes that decision, I think that's still ultimately on the fighter, whether the coach gives them that ultimatum or not. Yeah, I just think that it, it does suck when a fighter has to make that decision based off of connections or, poli or uh, the political side of the game, you know, and I am. I mean, there are some benefits of it, too, and we will go over that, you guys, and we will do that. But one of the things that always it, – it's always sat in the back of my mind, but I never really worried about it too much, was let's say a guy comes in and trains with me and he's working with me, and then all of a sudden his best friend is about to fight me, and he starts giving him all the information of all of our training and all of our sparring days. It never really mattered to me because, like, I have – so many fights out there you can go out there and see what i actually do when the lights are on yeah. you can see it. it's all out there you know so like I, it didn't really bother me too much but it does like when you're working on certain things that you're trying to keep a secret or something like that that's where it comes into like okay are they gonna say this are they gonna say that and i honestly i don't really care because i don't really i didn't really keep too many secrets i'd like hey i'm i'll post i'm going to boxing today, going to jujitsu today, you know, you know, I'm training how to fight. So doesn't matter. But when certain guys, the, I guess the, just the, just the wary of the fact that you might be me and you are training TJ and you might be more loyal to my opponent than to me. Yeah. That that's something that I believe keeps certain fighters from getting the, I don't know, from uh, going out there and exploring the cross training even. Oh, yeah, and, and I definitely get that. But, I mean, that, that comes down at the end of the day. It's like, oh, sure, you, you can tell him, hey, man, oh, you know, he's fast, and he hits hard, and he does this. I, I don't know how much, you know, that's going to help. You know, there's the technical things where it's like, well, you know, he's really good at coming up. He, he hits the switch really well if, if, if you're on his back. You know, if you shoot in, he, he's able to get your back. You know, there's only so much, only so much that's going to help you. I mean, in football, it's like, you know, they'll tell you, hey, we're, we're coming up the middle. You got to stop it. And it, it's a different beast. And I like the way you put it, because with your experience, it, it, it's truly telling. There, there's not many people in the world that have had many, as many fights as you or more. So when you say, you know what, hey, the film's out there. If you, if you have good coaching, they're going to tell you what I do when it matters. Because here's a newsflash. I'm better in the gym. Every fighter ever is better in the gym. When the lights turn on and the adrenaline goes, there's guys that show up. And they perform really well, but I guarantee if you find that guy in the gym, he's going to do really well. I don't know if I agree with that 100%, but I know what you're talking sure. about because there's some guys that are fucking they're, – they're okay in the gym, but when the lights come on is when they shine. And I, I can't explain it. But now I guess we should get into the benefits of cross-training, and this probably isn't going to take that long because a lot of them are fucking obvious. <laughs> you know, one, I just want to start off with this. The – the fact that when you're training with certain guys all of the time, I like TJ, you're way better than me. Every single day we train, you're better than me, but I start to pick up on your habits. I start to pick up on your routine and things like that, and I start to be able to pick apart. Now, you are still the, one of the best strikers in the state or in the world even, and I get the better of the exchanges sometimes because I know you always come with your lead hook after you throw your straight, and I'm waiting for it. So I a little bit more, but I see you every day or I catch you in a reversal in jujitsu because you always put your pressure to one side. So I get that reversal almost every time. But to say that I'm better than you because of that isn't necessarily the case, you know, and that's one of the things with cross training. You start to see 
other aspects. Maybe you start to think like, oh, TJ's a higher belt than me, and I reversed him today, or he's been striking longer than me, and I am, it was able to counter him today. So you start to get this false confidence that you're better than what you are and not recognizing the fact that you are just picking up on your training partner's habits. Then when you go against somebody else who you've never trained with, never worked with, who has different habits, different tendencies, different fates, different fakes, and all of that, now you get your ass whooped or you get shocked. And you don't want that the first time that to happen is in the fight. So it's good to go out there and work with different training partners. And that's one of the main benefits, I believe. Oh, of course. I mean, no matter what position you are at in the gym, it helps to get a new look. Whether you're the guy that's at the, you're at the bottom of the total, you're the guy that gets beat up in the gym. Well, hey, maybe you get a new look and you go against a guy you can beat up because that's ultimately going to help you grow or you're the best guy in the gym, all you do is beat up on your training partners in a good way, obviously. I'm not saying you're being an asshole and knocking them out, but you beat up on your training partners. You're the best guy in the gym. It's, it's, not, it's not on paper, but everybody knows it. It's great for that guy to get another look. It's not saying he needs, oh, you know, he's too big for his fishbowl. He needs to go to a new gym. Well, no, he just needs to get a new look. He needs new timing. He needs a new rhythm. He needs just a, a, a new partner to work with sometimes. And I appreciate your hypothetical situation there, but you know, in all reality, I was on the real side of that. You know, I got a chance to work with you every single day. And, and it got to a point where if people came in and watched it, I held my own sometimes. And you know, not, not toot my own horn, if, if you watch it, it's like, oh man, TJ's pretty good. That's not the case. I got a chance to work with Damien every day for eight years straight. Like you said, develop, you develop that timing. You know what comes after what. I know it's a one, three, two, and then a head kick. So you might throw the one, three, two, and then I dump the head kicks. Like, damn, his timing's good. It's like, no, I knew that was coming. And some of my combos, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, sometimes you need the other look. And it's not saying that I need to work with people that are better than Damien. You need to work with people that are different because they have different timing, they have different movement. And you develop so much as a fighter that if you're working with the same guys, whether they're the best guys in the world, ultimately you're only going to get to a certain level. You need to branch out and sometimes you need guys that are better than you. Sometimes you need guys that you can beat up on. And that's, you know, that, that's obvious stuff. And it, it's not something, like I said, and I don't, when I say beat up on fighters, what I mean, I don't mean with malicious intent. Sometimes you just need a guy that, you know, you can keep at a jab distance, you know, when his hook's coming and you can hit him with the left. It's the kid brother of the gym. Every, every gym needs the kid brother. <laughs> and the so, kid brother has a littler brother than him. There, there's always a guy. There's a family, dude, you know? So, but, but one of the other things too, that I feel like, cause I, the, the benefits are there and they're so clear, but there's some that are underlining or I guess that you won't necessarily see unless you actually start to do it. But the relationships you build when you are doing cross training, when your relationship with other coaches, with other fighters at other gyms and other teams, fighters and coaches are always getting offered fights, right? Let's say TJ, you get offered a fight and we're at the same weight class. But you're not able to do it because of other obligations and no one on your team is able to do it. But I cross train with you and you're like, hey, Damien's around that weight. I don't know if he'll do it, but he might be the guy. And you tell that promoter that I'm the guy and they hit me up and I would have never gotten that opportunity otherwise. And it's all because you had seen me at the gym. Maybe I didn't even come cross train with you. I came cross trained with someone else at the gym and you seen me there and you liked the work that I was doing. And everybody, when, when they get asked for uh, a recommendation for a fighter, no one wants to send them a turd or send them somebody who sucks. You know, they want to give somebody the uh, somebody they believe in the opportunity and to get that recognition that somebody else on another team believes that I have the skill and then passing on an opportunity to me that, I mean, if I would have stayed at home, I would have never got <laughs> closed mouth. Don't get fed. You know what I mean? And th that's an old saying. And I feel like that's something that people don't necessarily see or understand fully the aspects of that because it's not always what you know. Sometimes it's who you know or who knows you. Oh, man, 100,000%. And this is going to, and to the untrained mind, this is going to sound like I contradicted myself earlier where I mentioned, you know, it's such a big thing, but, you know, locally, uh, unfortunately, we have to, you know, you have to fight each other and that's how you build up. But on the reverse side of it, it's a local bubble and sure you have to fight each other, but the relationships you build there 
are ultimately what are going to help you in the end because the goal for every single guy, no matter what Jimmy is, is to get out of that bubble. He want, he, you want to get onto that big stage. And as soon as they do, you see that support come from whatever gym it is because ultimately you want to see that. And that guy may have fought your teammate at some point, and if he's making it to the bigger stage, chances are he won. But, you know, you're looking at that and you still go, you know, I, I want to see him do his best because, you know, it's, it's a family. You know, you fight with your brother sometimes, but when your brother goes and slides on that chick, you know, you're his wingman. You know, you're like, hey, get it. Let's, let's go. And, and that's what it's about. It's building those relationships because, like you said, you know, you, you might fight. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean, you know, you have to hate each other. And, hey, you might be friends with a guy at another gym who's going to fight a guy at your gym who, you know, Damien has fought many of people that I had known and respected. And when they fought, that didn't mean that I automatically hated that person. You know, you keep your distance because you understand, you know, what's at stake. You know, obviously I'm, I'm literally in Damien's corner. I have to do what I can to help him win. But before, and as soon as the fight's over, the respect is nothing but there. You know, you, you want to see them then. And ultimately, you know, during the fight as well, it's not like, oh, go, go out there and hurt them. It's go out there and get the win, be the better competitor, because that's what the sport is. And, you know, there does, and is there great when there's animosity? A thousand percent. I love it. That sells tickets. But it, it doesn't mean that it has to be fake. And by growing out, and sometimes it, it's going to be real stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to disagree with you again. Because when you say, like, no one's going out there to hurt each other. Dude, I was trying to hurt the motherfucker every single time. I was yeah. trying to fuck them up. I was trying to hurt them. I'm not, you know, but it is a competition. Um, but at the same time, it's not like I didn't understand the, the fact that, hey, this is a competition. I'm only trying to fuck them up because we're competing against each other. And, and as soon as it's done, how you said that there's nothing but respect after win, lose, or draw. And that's how it always has been. And then afterwards, you usually have a little bit of a better relationship. Always. And two, I've trained with multiple people that I have fought. I've won and lost. You know, I mean, whether I'm trying to hurt them in the fight or not, I understand that it could be a benefit to work with this person later on, no matter what. And that's the, key, that's the bottom line. And I, I feel like we kind of touched on everything. This might just be part one of a part two because I feel like there's so many other things that are kind of circling around in my head that we could touch on, but we just don't have enough time right now. So anybody else who uh, has anything to say uh, along with what we said, if you have anything to, if you agree, you disagree, let us know in the comment section, reach out to us, let us know. Cause we'll have you on the show. Let's talk about this. You know, I'm willing to have this discussion and I, I'm kind of curious to see how other people feel about it. Uh, before we do wrap this up, you know what to do. Like this video, subscribe to Trash Talk with Damien and TJ, and most importantly, don't be a motherfucking hoe. Pretty sure Samuel Jackson said that. Did he? <laughs> <laughs>